Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Right after left claim Mattis turn on Trump, Mattis stuck them down with just one sentence. The media has been trying to pick a fight between President Trump and Secretary James Mattis since the beginning because they know Mattis is a great military leader and he and Trump are very close. This week alone they tried to say Mattis contradicted Trump when he said diplomatic options were never off the table. Earlier that day Trump said talk with North Korea was over. The media left out one huge piece though. Mattis said he never contradicted Trump and the U.S. is not talking to North Korea right now. Mattis fired back at the nosy reporters on Wednesday who wanted to know why he turned on Trump with something fierce. I was asked if there were any diplomatic efforts left, and I said, of course. Diplomatic can include economic sanctions, United Nations, not just talking, it didn't contradict anything the president said. We're not talking to the North Koreans right now. Even better, when the reporter said Mattis' statement was widely interpreted to contradict Trump, Mattis hit back with, then it was widely misinterpreted. So it looks like it was actually the media and not Trump who were trying to force us into a war with North Korea while also tearing apart the White House. They should be ashamed. This right here is just another example of why President Trump trusted the military to Secretary Mattis in the first place. Mattis stands by the president and the president trusts his decision making. It's that simple. Let's help rectify this nasty smear campaign by getting this shared to all Republicans and show Mattis and Trump stand together completely. Top Florida official spills beans on voter fraud, the Democrats don't want this getting out. President Trump refuses to back down from the claims that illegal aliens voted in the election. This will not be seen on the mainstream media. This is the kind of news that Anderson Cooper has nightmares about. What you are about to read will kill the liberal narrative. According to the Daily Signal, Broward County Elections Supervisor Brenda Snipes is defending her office against a lawsuit brought by the American Civil Rights Union. According to the case, the rolls are inflated with non-citizens and felons and other ineligible voters. On July 31, the South Florida Sun Sentinel reported that Snipes acknowledged the processes her office has been using aren't perfect and that some non-citizens and felons have voted despite not being eligible, especially right before major elections, when groups are actively registering new voters. She then said that the statement was blown out of proportion. Snipes is an ally of Hillary Clinton and met with her during the election, says the Miami Herald. The mainstream media will not show this. Share this everywhere and comment Trump was right below this. Together we can beat them. New report on left-wing SBLC shows exactly where their money is gone. and it's wicked. Some new revelations are plaguing leftist favorite hate-spouting charity, the Southern Poverty Law Center. New records being released show that the tax-exempt charity is funneling millions of dollars to offshore bank accounts, according to the Washington Free Beacon. In 2015 the SBLC received $50 million in donations and had $320 million in net assets. Its business income tax return from 2015 also shows that the center has financial interests in Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, and British Virgin Islands. In 2015 SBLC sent $2,200,000 to an entity incorporated in the Cayman Islands. Another $2,200,000 was sent to a different fund in the Cayman Islands a fund with exactly the same address as the first fund. The Free Beacon interviewed Amy Sterling Castle, CEO of consultative firm Pacific Human Capital. She said of these revelations, I am stunned to learn of transfers of millions of offshore bank accounts. It is a huge red flag and would have been completely unacceptable to any wealthy, responsible, experienced board member who was committed to a charitable mission who I ever worked with. But the rabbit hole goes even deeper. Top executives at this charity make six-figure incomes while spending comparatively little on legal services to help the poor and disempower their supposed mission. They have 75 lawyers on their staff but had only spent $61,000 on legal services in 2015. The SBLC is known for producing a hate map of organizations it calls domestic hate groups. This list includes conservative organizations in the mainstream right next to neo-Nazi and white nationalist groups. Pacific Justice Institute, a pro bono legal service provider working to defend civil liberties, was put on the hate list. CEO Brad Dacus said this. Why is the Southern Poverty Law Center doing this? 
It's simple. They want to vilify and isolate anyone that doesn't agree with their very extremist leftist policy and ideology. This isn't about defending civil rights, this is about attacking civil rights. The SBLC seems like a corrupt organization, yet leftists keep legitimizing it by donating money and airtime. Let's spread the word of who they really are by sharing this post 10,000 times. H.T. Washington Free Beacon While everyone was watching Trump, no one noticed Melania's incredible offer to all victims of Harvey. President Trump and Melania went to Texas on Tuesday to check out the damage from Hurricane Harvey and offer words of support and encouragement to the victims of the storm. President Trump gave a rousing speech detailing how the federal government is doing the utmost to help the disaster, working with state and local authorities to make aid as effective as possible. Less publicized was Melania Trump's statement about the event, a sensitive piece in which she offered to do anything she could to help those in need after Harvey. The effects of Hurricane Harvey will be felt in Texas, Louisiana, and other parts of the country for many months and years to come. So far, 1.7 million people are under orders to evacuate their homes, and, as the flood water in Houston rises, sadly, so will the number of evacuees. I want to be able to offer my help and support in the most productive way possible, not through just words, but also action. What I found to be the most profound during the visit was not only the strength and resilience of the people of Texas, but the compassion and sense of community that has taken over the state. My thoughts and prayers continue to be with the people of Texas and Louisiana. The media must have written 10,000 stories about the shoes Melania wore on her way to Texas, but seems not care as much about her beautiful words of support and compassion to those in need. Let's combat the haters and spread her message far and wide. H.T. Washington Examiner Reporter just attacked Trump over hurricane, what Sarah Sanders said next blew her mind. President Donald Trump is joining a list of celebrities that have pledged to donate money to Hurricane Harvey. White House Press Secretary announced it today during the press briefing. I'm happy to tell you that he has said he would like to join in effort, Sanders told reporters. He will pledge proudly a million dollars of his own personal money to help the people in Texas. Reporters then asked if the money would come from the Trump Foundation or the Trump Organization, Sanders said he said he is personally going to give the money, adding, I don't know the legal part of that exactly. He said his personal money. She then told the reporters that Trump wanted the journalists in this room because you are very good at research and are doing a lot of reporting to tell the president which organizations would be best to give money to you. That's how our president does it. He is shutting down the haters. Share this if you think it's time to make this country great again. Say a prayer for Texas below and get this article out there. One of the people in this photo found dead, body pulled from the Potomac. Media silent. Federal agent Kurt Smolek was found dead after going missing on Monday. His body was pulled from the Potomac on Wednesday. Smolek was a diplomatic security special agent with the State Department, according to WIO.com. This is sad. He was pulled from the Potomac on Wednesday. The cause of his death is unknown. Smolek was a 1998 Dayton Police Academy graduate and was a member of Condoleezza Rice's security team, according to WIO. According to D.C. Metro Police, Smolek was seen on Monday, August 28, within the vicinity of the 600 block of Water Street, Southwest. It's sad that he has passed. He was described as white with brown hair, brown eyes, 5 feet 8 inches and 190 pounds. Christian Sherman, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State and Assistant Director for International Programs gave the following statement to Sparrow News on Thursday. It is with great sadness that I share with you the news of the death of Diplomatic Security Special Agent Kurt Smolek. Kurt was found deceased today and the DS, Diplomatic Security Agency, is working closely with local authorities to investigate the circumstances of his death. Please keep the Smolek family in your thoughts and prayers during this difficult time. Share this if you think that it's time to drain the swamp. There is something fishy going on in Washington. We need to stop the calendar and drain the swamp. The people that are fighting for socialism or whatever in our government must be stopped. This morning Trump said the one thing that Comey and Hillary didn't want getting out. 
President Trump slammed the rig system following the twisted reports that former FBI Director James Comey began drafting an exoneration statement for Hillary Clinton before he had ever interviewed her, says Fox News. This is the scandal of the century. Where is the lying media? Where are they? They covered every play-by-play -play of the Russian conspiracy theory against Trump, but they haven't touched this one at all. The president is talking specifically about the allegations made yesterday by Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley and Senator Lindsey Graham. We covered that yesterday. You can read more on that by clicking the link here. Here is what Tucker Carlson had to say about the issue. Conclusion first, fact gathering second, that's no way to run an investigation, Chuck Grassley and Graham wrote in a letter this week to the FBI. The FBI should be held to a higher standard than that, especially in a matter of such great public interest and controversy. According to the unredacted portions of the transcripts, it appears that in April or early May of 2016, Mr. Comey had already decided he would issue a statement exonerating Secretary Clinton, the senators said. This is the scandal of the century and needs to be reported as such. The entire cabal is covering up this story. It won't get traction on Facebook, it won't get traction on CNN or most cable for that matter. It's up to us to literally share this everywhere and bring down the crime syndicate that runs our government.